1985, Windows Executive was eight colours, but most people still used phosphorus monochrome displays, which meant it was useless. But in 1985, a new contender appeared. It was known as the Commodore Amiga. We know upon launch, the Commodore Amiga had a palette of 4096 colours, of which 256 could be chosen at any given time, or even more with hand mode. But Workbench came with just four colours, plus an extra one for the mouse colour. The four colours that we got were black, white, and orange, which you can see used on those icons, and also blue, which makes up the background colour. Many years, most people were used to these colours until Workbench 2 came along, and which we got another four colours which were slightly different. You may notice I've copied C palette to the preferences drawer, and in here we can check out all of those four colours in detail and also change those as well. But that was until I came across a video by Shot97. Uh, one of many uh, tools I have is called WB Plane, and this will subtract uh, the bit planes or add them. You can actually you can add a whole lot of bit planes. So I tracked down that WB Plane program, and it ended up being on Fred Fish Disk 543. So downloading that off another place on the internet, not this database, I managed to find it. It is not on the Aminet, but I managed to find some more colour programs, and all of those work with Workbench 3, and none of those work Bench 1.3. And you can see lots of them, Colour Lock is definitely a great program, and Load C Map is a brilliant program, which I definitely recommend, and uh, C Palettes we've got already, and Full Palettes you can see there is another brilliant program for Workbench 3 but not 1.3, so I found C palette, which was the only thing which could show me the palettes on Workbench 1.3, but unfortunately I can't save or lock the palettes using that utility. So I copied the WB plane, the add WB plane, to the C directory of a vanilla 1.3 boot disk, and as you can see by typing that in that will add another bit plane to workbench and what that basically means is it now goes up from four colors to eight colors and if we add another bit plane it will go up to 16. Well, let's just check out the eight colors and you can see those and of course eight color workbench was available with magic workbench which i always thought was a bit flimsy and eight colors was still a bit pokey on workbench when we really needed 16. But what I really didn't realise back in the 1980s was this program existed to change Workbench into a 16 colour Workbench. That's right, 16 colours on Workbench 1.3. And if you can find some 16 colour icons, of which I think that's a 16 colour icon, well, you can use them. And I know for a fact that I've acquired this game from the Lou Colzer YouTube channel, and this game definitely uses 16 colour icons. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rearrange those icons in the colour palette until they make a little more sense, and I'm going to speed up that footage just a little bit. <laughs>
can see, having now remapped all those colours, we can now use 16 colour icons on Workbench 1.3, something I wish which was launched on the day of launch in 1985, because I think that would have blown away PCs for at least another 5 years, or at least maybe even 10 years until Windows 95 came along. But for now, it is definitely compatible with Magic Workbench, but I can't seem to find a program which locks the colours in place, and so if you know one of those programs which works on Workbench 1.3, let me know, and then you can use this on that Workbench. But unfortunately, the Workbench was not compatible with 16 colours, and if you try, it will crash eventually, even though I have all this memory. So thank you very much for checking out this video, and maybe you can check this out for yourself. <laughs>